Welcome to the lecture on binary counters. Binary counters are typically made up of JK latches in the toggle mode. So both the J and the K are tied high and it's a divide by two. And we have two of them here. So we have two and two to the two, which would be four. So this is a two bit, which would be a modulus four divide by 4 and it's going to count from 0 to 3 okay so this is synchronous which means our clocks are tied together okay and our outputs are of our Q feeds into the JK of the next latch here's the 2-bit synchronous counter waveform the first one in the yellow is the clock. We're going to ignore that and we're going to have a divide by four. Or here we have zero, zero, one, zero, which would be one, zero, one, which would be two, one, one will be three. So it's going to start at zero, count to three, reset at four. Here we have a three bit synchronous counter. Uh, three of them is going to be divided by eight. We have our clocks tied together, which is going to be why they're synchronous. Unfortunately, we have to use a decoder here in order to make this device work. This is probably why we're going to use the asynchronous is because they're not as complicated. So at, after we go to larger ones, it becomes more and more complicated. Here we have the 3-bit synchronous counter waveform. We start here at 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, which is 1, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1 is 3, 0, 0, 1, which is 4, 1, 0, 1, which is 5, 0, 1, 1, which is 6, 1, 1, 1 which is 7 and it resets at 7 so it goes from 0 to 7 divide by 8. Here is a 2-bit asynchronous counter. Uh, the past counter we looked at was synchronous which means it's connected to the clock. This is asynchronous which we're going to feed it from one to the other and the clocks are going to be off of the first one. So JKs are tied high and we're going to feed from Q to the clock since this is a negative edge trigger. On the presentation or my notes uh, we go from the Q not to the clock and that's because it's a positive edge. This is a real device of 1112 so it's a negative edge so we're going to feed from Q to the clock. Here is the 2-bit uh, asynchronous counter. It's the same output of the synchronous. The only difference is there's a little delay here, which I'll cover uh, in a little bit, but basically the same as the uh, synchronous counter. Here is the 3-bit asynchronous counter. Uh, we have the clock input to the first one, and then we cascade from cues to the clock. Okay, all the JKs are in toggle mode, and uh, this one is much simpler than a, a synchronous counter. So we could stack a lot of these uh, subsequent uh, counters and make a decent uh, count without too much issues. Here's the output of the asynchronous counter. It's the same as the 3-bit synchronous counter except for the little bit of delay which I'll cover here in a second but basically it's a count from 0 to 7 divided by 8. We're going to talk about asynchronous counters here. They're also known as a ripple counter because of a delay between each of the subsequent uh, pulses. So as we see here we're feeding from Q A, a bar not to the clocks. So inside each one of these there is a propagation delay. There's a time delay between the clock and the output. 
So these start adding up. We have a delay here, a delay there, and a delay here. And here magnified, we could see that we get a clock and the output is delayed. Okay, it's, it's quite small, but it is delayed. And then when we have the next one, we have two propagation delays here. And then when we go again, we're going to have another two and then a third.